Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the second night of the 40th Army 2B Euphonium Workshop. We have a really exciting, fun concert for you tonight. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for everyone watching at home. Uh, please check out our usarmyband.com. Check out our Instagram, um, where we have all these great videos, everything being posted. Um, we're just having a party tonight, and we're having a lot of fun. So without further ado, please welcome the U.S. Army Band, the U.S. Army Blues Swamp Romp.
Good evening, everybody. How you doing? Yeah, so I guess this is like, uh, Chris Buckley just told y'all this is the 40th one of these, but I think this is the first one in like three years, right, with live human beings in the audience. So welcome back. Great to see y'all. Uh, my name is Sergeant Major Graham Breedlove. I'm originally from Lafayette, Louisiana, and I co-founded this group about <coughs> a couple years ago, uh, back in the 1900s with a really good friend of mine named Harry Waters. And uh, the first thing we play for you, yeah, if you know Harry, he, he may be watching online. Clap for him. <laughs> so the first thing we played for you guys is a traditional New Orleans thing you hear around this time of year. If you know uh, about our calendar down in Louisiana, Mardi Gras is coming up, so we're all very excited about that. And on the trombone from Valrico, Florida, you heard Sergeant First Class Luke Brimhall. The newest member of the Army Blues, which is the big band we come out of, from Jacksonville, Florida, that's Staff Sergeant Daniel Dickinson. From Germantown, Maryland, on the banjo, Sergeant First Class, Michael Kramer. From Philadelphia, piano, uh, Philadelphia Pennsylvania, on the piano, that's Staff Sergeant James Collins. And then the one guy who didn't get the uniform memo, um, I don't really need to introduce him, do I? Yeah, okay. Special guest, my honor to introduce our guy, Mr. Patrick Sheridan on the sousaphone. So we're gonna continue with something from the pen of the legendary Jelly Roll Morton, and this is entitled Millenberg Joys. Thank you. 
All right. Thank you so much for coming out. Thanks for staying out late tonight. Late is, you know, before 8 o'clock. Late. Late. Most of us got to get home and drink milk, I understand. So tonight we're going to play a lot of blazing fast music. Um, we're going to play a slow one next, but um, this, this band plays ballads really great. And um, I'm just not in a ballad place yet. I'm still... Uh, mourning the loss of lots of people and trying to figure out what life is like after whatever just happened to all of us. And so, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really in a ballad place. I'm still thinking like our hips need to move more. More babies should happen and uh, we should party. That's what should be happening. That's what should be going on. Not my babies, that's for sure. Um, speaking of babies, this next tune's by Graham Breedlove and we all want to know how you got that name. But speaking of babies, now we know. So that's where that came from. We're going to bring out uh, a great... <laughs> you never thought about that, did you? Yeah. No, only every day in high school when they made fun of you. I know. <laughs> wish I'd been there. <laughs> so, so we're going to bring out <clears throat> a stalwart in the world of bass playing, Mr. Tom Holtz, formerly of the President's Own United States Marine Band, and now of all things jazz up and down the East Coast and hopefully all over the world. Tommy, come on out. Say hello. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tom Holtz. Please say hi. Tom's been here with the band before. Tom and I have known each other a really long time. We went to Arizona State University back in the 1980s. Yep. And, uh, and then we were both in the Marine Band together. We overlapped by a couple of years. And uh, Tom stuck around, and I got out to grow my hair. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. New guy in the band. He's a little late. That's all right, Eric. It's cool. It's totally fine. Uh, and we, so you know, anyway, in the, in the light of not really in the mood to play a ballad and still sort of feeling lots of sadness about the things that, the people that we lost, especially we lost somebody very dear to us recently, Mr. Ed Goldstein, who's a wonderful, wonderful tuba player, beautiful human being, one of the founding members of the Peabody Ragtime Jazz Ensemble, and uh, was really in the very early days of this conference, someone that you could always depend on. The very last night after the big concert band concert, we would all gather in a... A, 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 a lactose-tolerant place for imbibing milk and other things. And uh, we would always be jazz, and Ed would always play, and he would always play really soulfully and really beautifully with a really great time. So we miss him terribly, and uh, we're going to play a couple tunes and think about Ed right now. This is a tune by Graham. It's called Requiem, and we all know what that means. So we hope you like this. This has got a little bit of tears, and it's got a lot of Blues Brothers. Dig it. This is Requiem by Graham Breedlove.
We're going to uh, give the people that play way more notes than the tuba players do a little break. And uh, I asked Tommy what he wanted to do, and he's like, hey, man, let's play a little bit of You Are My Sunshine for Eddie. So we're going to do a little greasy You Are My Sunshine. So we don't, please don't take my Ed Goldstein away. Let's sing that when we get to that point. Ready, man? Thank you. 
Give it up for Tom Holtz. All right. We're going to play another original tune from one of the founding members of this uh, jungle rot, um, this swamp prompt. Uh, this is from Harry Waters. Now, if you've ever met Harry Waters, you'll, you'll notice he's a... He's an extremely tall, very rotund human being, um, <laughs> thick-boned, and very quiet, and uh, with zero slide technique. Um, that's all the opposite things that Harry is. Uh, Harry, yeah, me too. Me too. Me too. Actually, one of the things that you have to do when you... He, Harry retired in 2007 from the United States Army Band, and uh, Luke was... Uh, uh, the the they you know they just found somebody with like like that looked four that looked like Harry and brought him in and then you know it's like plays even more reharm than Harry does. But on the way out when you retire in the army, a lot of people don't know this. You have to have a blood test. And on the way out, they took a blood test from Harry and they found out he doesn't have any blood. He's just filled with Red Bull. He's Red Bull with skin. That's all he is. It's just skin and Red Bull. That's it. So you're going to hear this on this next tune. This is called Frenchman Street House Party. And I never really knew what a house party was in New Orleans until I got to play one. The one I played with Kevin Clark and Harry and Wes Anderson and a whole bunch of guys from New Orleans was actually right off of Bourbon Street. And at a house party, you go up to the top floor with the band and the band plays and drinks flow and the band plays and drinks flow and drinks flow and the band plays and the band plays and the band plays. And Harry plays faster and faster and faster. And finally, after like nine hours of playing and a lot of drinks have flown, Harry's like, let's do Cherokee at quarter note equals 9,000. So when I heard this tune for the first time, I didn't even need to know who wrote it. I was like, this has to be by Harry Waters because it's got so much energy, so much happiness, so ebullient, which is absolutely what describes him as a human being. So we hope you like this wonderful, fun, Haitian voodoo groove. <laughs> How's that for a setup, Luke? Yeah, this is the Frenchman Street House Party. If you sign the liability form, you can move your hips in the aisles.
Who knows Harry? Can you not hear the him in that song? He wrote himself. It's an autobiography. <laughs> it's an amazing. This could be called Red Bull. Okay, so now you know we, we uh, we're going to do something that we that I don't know that the band has done too often, but the band did it in a what did you call it? it was like a bad it was a bad idea, Graham, in a winter storm, a blizzard with you and. Yeah, you and Tom Holtz got on the phone together and said, you know what we should do? We should play some of the some chamber music from one of the greatest chamber music groups in the world. That's what you said. And I was like, oh man, I know exactly who that is. So that's one of the fun things about this. Is, uh, 
in a, in a group like this, a, a medium format chamber music, and in a big band, of course, the 18 piece, that's the largest format of chamber music that's made, all was done without a conductor. It's, it's the reason if you're a, a band teacher, you want to have a jazz band, because it makes leadership happen in all of your ensembles. It's great chamber music. So for me, the, one, the, greatest, the greatest trio in all, probably all of music is the band Rush. I love them. Yeah. I mean, unbelievable. Some of their long format stuff is just incredible. When they penned this tune, this is not one of the long format tunes. When they penned this tune and they played it on tour, they played it on every single tour through 2018. Right before they, they, they scuttled the band. And then, of course, we lost Neil Peart not long after that. So we're going to play this super famous song for you in a little throwback to the time when I had a huge giant. It happened. Blonde Afro. This is Tom Sawyer from Rush.
That didn't sound like banjo, Mike. <laughs> that was killing. So I remember very vividly being a little kid, 14 years old, at the very first one of these 40 years ago. I was 14 years old. I came to this conference. My parents put me on a Greyhound bus. They sent me from Cottage Grove, Minnesota, all the way out here. I think it was 30 or 40 weeks on a bus to get here. And I was here, and it was Marty Erickson, and Roger Barron, and Jeff Harwood, and Jack Tilbury, and I was always famous. Brian Bowman was in the euphonium section. Uh, uh, just a couple of years later, Jan Duke and Dave Porter. It was such a, like, how touching was that last night that the former principal euphonium of the Air Force Band was conducting two people that were used to be in his section. It was super cool. So I got to experience all that as a teenager and was freaking out about how awesome all this stuff was and how incredible military music was. And Harold Brash was still around. Harold Brash was a euphonium soloist from 1930 to 1950, the United States Navy Band. And I had him as a teacher at the International Music Camp. And I wanted to play a piece of music. And I didn't have the music for it. And it was in a different key. So I wrote him and I said, could I please have this in a different key? And he was at that part of his career, which was like 50 years after he'd been in the Navy, where he's like, I'm going to show this little high school kid something. So I got this nasty gram back about like, use your ears, young man. If you can't figure it out, take this letter and stuff it in your ears. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> but it was the really great message of like, hey, if there's music you want to play, then play it. That's it. Just do it. Sit down with it. And we have such great access to information now, so every single day we can all sit in the greatest bands on the planet. I got to spend two months knowing I was going to get to come here and play, and I got to play with the Swamp Romp every day on YouTube, because they're there because they're on Apple Music, because they're on Spotify. I got to sit in with all these great musicians. I had my phone held up in the air last year at the 2021 Midwest Clinic for the Army Blues. The whole big band played. It was an unbelievable concert. And I've been playing that all for, for like the last 14 months. I put my earbuds on and I, I play the concert with you guys. It's, it's on, I get to, like, not that I could ever even hold a candle to Reagan, but it's like, you can always sit in with anybody that you want. Put your headphones on and sit in. And if it sounds wrong, play a half step the other way. And if it sounds worse, go a half step the other way. <laughs> and if it still sounds bad, keep playing it. It'll eventually resolve. <laughs> You'll find it. You'll find, Bill even told us today, it's a happy, it's sad, it's longing, right? So make sure you're doing those things. Reward yourself every day with play. I got my start in music not as a tuba soloist. I didn't originally want to be in a band. I just wanted to be a polka band tuba player. My parents were dancers for a hobby. So I was a ballroom dance partner to my mother so that my father could teach when I was nine years old, which was a couple of weeks before I started playing the tuba. And they decided I needed to learn the traditional music. So they sent me to a, 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 a ballroom that had a live band and they played Schottisch and Viennese waltzes and tangos and two-steps and cha-chas and all this music. And my first exposure to music wasn't playing it. It was moving to it. It was dancing. And the second lesson I had, I'm walking off the dance floor with my partner and the accordion player in the band goes, hey, man, do you play? And I was like, yeah, I just started playing the tube. He's like, how long have you been playing? I was like, three weeks. This is like a cartoon, right? <laughs> Disappear for a year. Where you been? I've been in a gig. Um, and, uh, and so he's like, you got to bring your tuba next week. And I was like, no, no, my parents, I'm supposed to be here dancing. And he's like, do you want to play in the band? I was like, I would love to play in the band. He's like, well, you can figure out how to lie to your parents then. And I was like, mm, okay. <laughs> First lesson in professional music. So, so, <laughs> so I went to my, my parents the next week, and I was like, hey, it's Saturday morning. I'm going to bring my tuba. And my dad's like, what, what, what for? And I was like, I'm going to practice when you drop me off. I get there a little bit early. And then when you guys come a little bit late, I'm going to practice my tuba. And he's like, well, okay. And they bought it. Right? And they came to the spring dance recital, <laughs> and I, was, there was, I never was on the dance floor. I was in the polka band, the whole thing. And my dad looks at me and he goes, how long have you been in the band? And I was like, since September. <laughs> it was okay, because I played okay. But my first experiences were like that, and then I got hired by a gentleman by the name, maybe some of you know him in the room, named Whoopi John. It was an old polka band guy, and he had a band. He was like, like, the, like the second in command to Lawrence Welk, but never had a TV deal. And uh, so I got to run around playing polkas, and that's what I was doing. I thought that's what I was going to do for the rest of my life, was play one, five, and watch people in frilly dresses and tuxes dance. 
That's what I really wanted to do. And all those people that were in those bands always taught me about tempo and about putting the bass line and watch people's feet. Watch them feet, and if their feet are moving the way they are, and they're happy when they're moving, you're doing the right job with the tempo and the right job with the bass. And that, of course, is Chick Webb. That's why Duke Ellington and Count Basie were scared to death of Chick Webb, because he would watch, the drummer would watch the feet of the dancers to make sure the tempo was exactly right. So that's why we want to do this. That's why every tuba player should be doing what Tom and I are doing. I hope you pick up a sousaphone, and I hope you come out and play some fun music, and you get to meet fun people like this. Highest level of musical fluency, of language fluency, is when you get together with your friends in a language you all speak, and you just hang out and speak extemporaneously. That's what's happening here. There's a few rules. There's a few forms that are happening. But for the most part, we're just discovering and talking to each other about all the problems we've had and all the happiness we've had and some of the flat nine unresolved issues in our life and some of the sharp 11 happy times that come after that. <laughs> <clears throat> and that's what, that's what this kind of music's all about. So we hope you do this and I hope you enjoy it and I hope you find some place to go play for people that are dancing because people standing up listening to music is still what's happening all over the world when people really love it. And if you've never been to New Orleans, you have to go. You have to go. There's only six guarantees in that town. So every musician that you see besides the six, one of which is the Dukes of Dixieland on the boat, the other ones are the Fritzl's gigs, everything else is tips. So load your wallet full of 20s, head on down to New Orleans, and tip musicians because they need your love, they need your money, and they you need to hear that music. It's the most soulful, beautiful, wonderful music played by some of the most fantastic people. And Tom and I... And everybody that's been able to stand on this stage as a tuba player stands on the shoulders of every single sousaphone player that plays in New Orleans every day for hours, every day, with chops I can't even imagine. So we're going to play a tune like that. This like tribute to all the people that have lips that blow hard, like just all the time, right? Like all these cats up here. This is Caravan. This is a super fun one. And this is, for me, an important one from the standpoint of the fact that this is Juan Tizol, principal trombone of the Duke Ellington Orchestra, wrote a tune. And this was the expectation at the top level of this kind of music, the top level of big band music, the top level of making jazz music, chamber music, is that you contribute to the art form with songs, and you contribute to the art form with improvisation. And I really hope that some of the ethos of that, that the jazz world still wears on its shoulder, sort of falls over into some of the other places on the planet. Because if the expectation was when you joined a chamber group or a concert band or a string orchestra, if you were expected at the very top level of your profession to bring something creatively to the table, our business would change a lot. And this world is the world that that's still the expectation. Last year at Midwest, blues went to town. They came to Chicago. They played a concert. 16 of the 18 members took meaningful, incredible solos, and 11 of the people in the band wrote songs for the band to play at the show. I can't think of the last time. I can't even think of a time in the Sousa band when Sousa had 11 composers and 16 soloists. But that's the Army Blues. So I hope you appreciate that. I hope you really get a chance. If you can come hear the blues or the Airmen of Note or the Ambassadors or any of the great jazz groups on the East Coast here and go check them out when it's not a conference because they really are an incredible treasure and holding a level to America's original art form that is really unsurpassed. So let's take a moment right now and give it up for all these great musicians on the stage. <laughs> Yeah, they all think they're in trouble because somebody's saying something nice about them. <laughs> it's hilarious. It looks like in disbelief. We hope you like this. We get on a ride. I think we're going to hear a little banjo. So this is a Tennessee caravan. Enjoy. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's a new tune for the band now, right? Is this the ballad? Is this the ballad? Yeah. This is a ballad about the Meat District at 3 a.m. by Nat McIntosh called Brooklyn Ballad. It's as much of a ballad as this is vodka. <laughs> That's all right. Frickin' trombone music. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. So this this uh, this this band kind of you know it, it it goes Dixieland it can swing it plays all kinds of Latin music and uh, they they they've been a lot of a brass band as well and uh, a lot of lot of fans of that type of music and um, I remember very clearly when he was in his early twenties when Nat and his brother uh, decided to make Young Blood Brass Band a thing as a bar band in Madison. I remember very clearly seeing them in in in. No, well, I actually wasn't seen clearly, but I remember being at the show, um, and uh, it was amazing. And they're still going. This is a more than 25-year-old band, um, uh, and uh, the cats are all. When you see them play now, it's like, oh my God, they're in their mid 40s. And I'm like, oh, they used to be. I just, I always think of them as being young. So this is uh, Nat's most famous tune, and. Uh, I've been doing it a lot. I've played it with jazz band, I've played it with concert band, I've played with all sorts of formats. And uh, this is normally a five part. We made it a four part. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it works really great. So the cats read it this afternoon and uh, we're gonna give it, uh, it's, uh, it's this format world premiere. Anyway, you guys all know this tune. You all love it. It's super fun and these cats are doing a great job with it. This is Nat McIntosh's Brooklyn. This is like the brass band version of the Fountains of Rome. Thank you. 
States Army Swamp Rob. Give it up. Patrick Sheridan. Thanks so much for coming out tonight. We got one more for you tonight. This is a classic. Uh, and uh, this is a classic for me in my mind because of Chuck Dallenbach. I never forget seeing him playing the tuba tiger rag when I was a little kid. I was 10 years old the first time I saw it, and the very next year I was 11 when I saw Sam do it. So this is, uh, yeah, this has been a part of the uh, infection for a long time. So with love and infection, we hope you like this lovely ballad on tiger rag. It's been a true pleasure, gentlemen. You are the greatest. It's so nice to be in the pocket that you dug before me. So thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. 
One more time for Patrick Sheridan. Give it up for the Swamp Rom, ladies and gentlemen, the United States Army Blues. The Swamp Rom. Thank you so much. Thanks for Tom Holt. Give it up for Tom. Thank you all, gentlemen. Thanks so much. <laughs>